Hey, what's going on, visionaries? Jason Osborne, JO Vision, back again with another video. And before I get started, I just want to say thank you for watching my channel. If this is your first time at my channel, well, I'm an upcoming YouTuber and professional photographer out of Houston, Texas. I specialize in portraits and event photography, and I think this channel can definitely offer you something if you are an upcoming photographer or maybe someone who's already been in the game but just looking to refresh on some of their skills. I have tutorials, I have how to's, I have lots of tips and advice for navigating this crazy world of photography. So so I think there's a video that everyone can enjoy and possibly learn from. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on here on YouTube or even follow me on Instagram at JOVision and I will definitely always respond and help you whenever I can. With that being said, let's get started on today's video. In today's video, it's all about color grading. A lot of people lately have been complimenting me and asking me how I've been color grading my photos and I want to share my knowledge with you. We're gonna be in Lightroom and Photoshop today and I'm gonna go over my process with both programs on how I like to color grade my photos to give it the color schemes that I want. Hopefully this will help you get your colors right and give a little pop of vibrancy into your photos. Coming up. Color is such an important part of photography, and with editing tools and powerful cameras these days, it seems like you can capture every single pixel of color that might go into a shot. Enhancing color is also a great way to add your own individual style into a photograph. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into Lightroom first, then into Photoshop using a, pho a photo that hasn't been color graded yet, and I'm gonna go and show you my process of how I go about color grading my photos. That way, you can see it firsthand, and it might be able to apply to your own photography. So let's get started. Let's hop in the Lightroom first. All right, so we are in Lightroom now, and um, this is just a raw photo of a shoot that I did about a month or two back. Uh, you can actually go on my Instagram and check out some of the photos that I posted from this session. It was cool. I also did a vlog uh, on the 50 millimeter 1.4 Sigma on this session as well so if you want to see some additional photos from this session or maybe how that lens works check out that review all right back to color grading though first thing i like to do when i look at a photo to color grade is i like to look at the colors that are already there we see a lot of blues a lot of greens a lot of reds a lot of cool colors okay so that's what we're going to focus on for our theme is the cool colors so the first thing I check is the hue saturation luminance, the HSL chart right here, okay? And uh, I pretty much just hit every one of these until I get a nice balance as a base. I use Lightroom as a base for my color grade, okay? So saturation, if I wanna boost any of the colors up, like the greens maybe, or the aquas, or maybe even the blues, you know, I can do that with saturation already. You see a nice color pop by doing that. Uh, yellows, if I wanna bring in some more warmth into the photo, or maybe even keep some of that warmth out of the photo, you can do that by taking blues in, I mean, taking yellows in or out of the photo. All right, so I play around with the saturation as far as how much color is going to be in the photo to begin with. And you can dial that down to any of these. Now, if you're not sure, on what color it is you can always hit this little uh, bullseye mark right here and drag it onto a specific part of the picture whether it be right here and if you look to uh, the right of the chart where my crosshair is at you'll see that the colors that it's over are being highlighted as well so if you look at the HSL chart Right now, as I move the mouse around, you'll see yellows, blues, greens, all getting highlighted depending on where that crosshair is. And that allows you to target those specific colors and then move them at once. So if I want to focus on the colors that are on the bins holding the green stalks, I can just put my crosshair over here and it will move the colors it's detecting in that. So you see there's mostly blue, but a little bit of purple in there. And just by adjusting or those sliders, uh, by adding or removing is changing the color of the photo. Okay, I'm not going to go too drastic So I'm just going to go right here Luminance is the brightness of your color. So if you want to make your the red in her uh, sunglasses or in her uh, Shirt pop a little more you can do that uh, The green if you want those green stalks to be a little bit brighter You can do that or you can make them super dark however you want to do it and that's pretty much what luminance does 
Q is a very powerful slider. I think it's pretty slept on. And that allows you to go in that one color section and then gradient it and change it to a different color. So you have your aquas and your blues. If you look at her shirt, it's going from teal all the way to dark blue, all right? And that's within that aqua spectrum. Same thing with the blues. You can get all the way to purple or you can come all the way back down to teal. Same thing if you go to the purples. There's not too much purple in the picture, so that's really not going to uh, do much. Uh, but you guys get the picture as far as how that works, okay? So I'm pretty much just gonna go ahead, reset this real quick, and I'm gonna go ahead and just give a, a nice simple color grade using saturation, luminance, and hue, all right? I'm gonna start with saturation, and basically uh, I'm gonna boost up some of these, these reds. I'm definitely gonna boost up some of these greens. Uh, the blues and a little aqua in there and not knowing what controls this down here I'm gonna come take my crosshair bring this up a little bit more purple something like that that's great simple same thing with the luminance. I'm gonna make that those reds a little bit brighter. I'm gonna make those greens just a little bit brighter. I'm gonna make those blues a little, a little brighter, cool one not? Aquas. I'm gonna make that shine. Go to the hue now. Same thing. And this is all trial and error. There's no problem for you to hit any of these colors go back and forth with the sliders and see what it can change like look if you take if you change the green hue now they got a little bit of yellow and that can add a whole different dynamic to your photo so really experiment find out what you like do you want more teal do you want more purple you know things like that we're in houston so i'm gonna leave that purple in there for right now all right so once i've done that all right i don't do any split toning believe it or not i come all the way down to the bottom to the calibration and this is something very nice i used to ignore this chart in lightroom so much but now i don't and i really uh pretty much it does something similar to the hue slider but it targets all the reds all the greens all the blues instead of being more specific like orange yellows etc etc and this can change the whole entire feel of your picture like look if i'm bringing it to the right you're getting more of an orange yellowish type of deal most likely it will affect the skin tone because orange affects the skin tone and orange is in the red primary. So you probably will affect your skin tones by moving the slider, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because look, you can add a nice little skin tone slash coolness to her own skin tone just by moving it over. I'm gonna keep that right there for green. I'm gonna move it over, see how it changes. Now she's a little bit too pink. So I'm just gonna leave the green where it's at in the blue. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. Obviously you can see how it, it changed her, made it more pale. And then this is also more pink as well. So I'm just gonna slightly keep it right where it's at, negative four. Uh, the shadows, basically they tint the shadows. So if you want your shadows to be more purplish, you can do that. If you want it to be a little bit more green, you can do that. I'm actually gonna rock somewhere in the middle, somewhere about right there, okay? So this is what I generally go through. Maybe not as fast, but this is typically the process I do, okay? Um, you can always come back up to saturation and overall increase the amount of color that's already present, not targeting any specific color. You can go to vibrance, which pretty much um, increases the power of the color subtly, okay? Saturation is overall, saturation I like to think of is the overall amount of color in the picture and vibrance is basically the power of the color, okay? So if you want your colors to be more poppy, more vibrant, more um, powerful, more colorful, you're gonna go to vibrance. And if you just want more color in your photo in general, you're gonna go to saturation. And you can always make sure you play around with your temp control of your photo. Look, just by cooling it off, it turned things way more purple. And by heating it up, you got a whole different summer day vibe, you know? So definitely wanna play with your white balance and your temperature control, all right? We're gonna go with a more cooler, you know, since I'm trying to be a little bit more exaggerated. I'm gonna cool that down and go like that. Right now, as you guys can see, 
This is the original photo before I color graded, and this is the after photo. All right, I did this really quick. Uh, There's a little bit too much color for my preference, but I like it anyway, so I'm just gonna keep rocking with it. Okay, so as you can see, Lightroom, powerful tool for color grading. You don't even really need to bring it into Photoshop if you don't want to, but there are some tools in Photoshop that I like using for color grading. So now that we've got our base Lightroom color grade down, let's transfer it over into Photoshop so I can show you how I finish. Let's go. So now we're in Photoshop. Everything is cool. Back straight from Lightroom. And basically the three things that I use the most to color grade the photo are um, selective color, I use gradient maps and I also use color lookup and these are three things that I use the most when I color grade my photos in Photoshop selective color is very similar to the HSL uh, or the hue slider in Lightroom except for it has a little bit more controls within each color I like this to really dial in a specific color and to really adjust each specific color the way I like it. Sometimes I don't change everything, but sometimes I go ahead and change it drastically. So for example, the reds, all right, you're gonna come here, you have your reds, your neutral, your whites, your magenta's blue, blah, blah, blah. You click your reds, and then within that red, you have cyan, you have magenta, you have yellow, and you have black, so you can adjust that. So just by targeting the reds in the photo, I can move the cyan slider, and as you can see, it's only really affecting the red tones. And that's what it's really doing, okay? Um, you can use this to increase a little bit more warmth on your subject, like I'm doing right now. And we'll leave it right there. Magenta, same thing. We're gonna leave it as is, not gonna touch it. Just because you can touch it doesn't mean you have to. The yellows, put a little more purple or more warmth in there. I actually kind of like that. And your blacks. And your blacks are really gonna just determine how dark or bright the color is that you're controlling. All right, and I'm gonna bring it down just a little bit, add a little more pop and contrast. Then you go to your yellows. And you really don't have to hit every single color. A lot of times, if the color's not really present in the photo, the adjustments that you're making, like with the cyan, you're not gonna see any adjustments. So that's not too bad. Same thing with the magenta. You know, little simple things on her shirt. If you notice, her earrings and the little yellow stripes on her shirt are what's changing. So why not? We'll make them orange. The yellow color, nothing really changing. And I'm not gonna even mess with the black. Greens, we know we have green in the background, so this will probably change a lot. No cyan, so that's fine. There you go, magenta basically is just controlling the luminance of it. So we'll bring them back up a little bit. Yellows, making them warmer or cooler. We'll make them a little cooler. Blacks, whites, nothing happening, okay? So um, the last one, we'll do cyan. Changing the color on the shirt, take it all the way out, basically white. Put it back in. I actually kind of like the white, so we're gonna leave it right there. Magenta, once again, in the cyan, change the, there you go. There you go, now that's good, that's cool. So you get the picture. Cyan, the selective color really allows you to dial in, okay? Um, you can go to your blues, make it, change the cyan within the blue. We're gonna change that to purple, just like that. Make it a little bit darker. We're in Houston, H-Town, why not? Purple is the, the, the unofficial city color. <laughs> Boom, look at that. That's super colorful right there. All right, magenta's not gonna worry about. Now your whites, neutrals, and blacks, that's basically your shadows, okay? So your whites, your highlights, okay? If you wanna add a little color grade to them, so your highlights would probably be the white in her glasses, um, maybe the white in her shoes, the white on these posts, the very vibrant, bright parts of the photo those are your highlights the whites of the stalks in the background so if you want to add a cyan tint to that those whites as you guys can see you know you can see it right there you want to add a little magenta to those whites cool same thing with the neutrals which is basically the overall picture um, if you want to add a nice little neutral color grade to it you know give it an overall theme you can do that and blacks are definitely your darks and your shadows, like underneath the stairs here, the corners, things like that. If you want to add a color grade to that, I'm not going to touch that really. So once I'm done with my selective color, and this is before, now, after, just overall, selective color just did that, okay? You can go to your gradient map, all right? And with gradient map, you're going to turn that on, and then you're going to go here, you're going to click on your gradient, 
and you're going to have all these things. Now, if you don't have all these colors, say this is your first time using Gradient Map, you can click on this gear symbol, and then it'll have all these different color selections. And basically, you can click on this, Color Harmonies, and then it'll ask you if you want to add them into your color library, and you can hit OK, and then it'll put it in there. I already have them all in there, so there you go. Basically, Gradient Maps allows you to color grade the photo based on the highlights and shadows in a gradient. So, for example, the darks and the shadows are over here, and they'll be colored and shaded purplish. As you get to your midtones, it's going to turn to more gray, and then your highlights and your brights will get more of a golden warmth, uh, white type of color grade. And you can see how that's represented in the photo. All the darks and the shadows that are being picked up by Photoshop, they're going to color grade those purple. All the brights and the highlights and everything of the photo are going to be colored gold, and that's pretty much how it goes with different gradients, okay? So how I do it is, is I like to go ahead, find a balance that I think would be complementary to the photo, you know, and it might look like crap like now. So once I do that, you go to your opacity and you lower this all the way down to about 12 to 15%. I don't like to go any higher or lower. 12 to 15% is where I like to stay for opacity. And then I go to normal and I go to soft light. And that really adds a nice subtle color grade to your photo now everyone is different you know once you have your settings dialed in you can go ahead and click a whole bunch of different ones and see how it affects your color scheme um, usually you'll be able to find a color gradient map that will complement the colors that you already have like right now this bluish all right is looking pretty good if you just want to see what's being colored you can see this would be all the opacity turned all the way up so basically I'm bringing it down just so it's represented enough to where I feel like it's making a positive effect on the photo. All right, and you can always add a layer mask to this as well, invert it. And now that once it's inverted, uh, you can go over to your paintbrush and then you can simply paint in where you want that gradient map to take effect. So say you just want it on the wall, okay? You can go ahead, turn your flow all the way up and you can just go ahead and paint in that grading. As you guys can see already, it's being painted in, et cetera, et cetera. So that's also a good way to um, have more control over these gradient maps. So I'm cool with that. The last thing I'm gonna do is gonna be color lookup. All right, now color lookup is similar to LUTs in uh, Premiere Pro, how you color grade your uh, footage. And as you can see right here, it says load 3D LUT. Now I only have the stock LUTs that are in, in, uh, already come with Photoshop. You can download a whole bunch of different ones. I think you can even use the LUTs that you use in Premiere Pro on here. So it's always a good, so if you wanna get like a cinematic look to your photos, you might wanna check that out. So basically what I do is, I just click the first one, I have it take effect, see how it already changed the color of it, and I just scroll down. And I see, okay, cool, what vibe do I really wanna finish with? How is this gonna really affect the color scheme that I have going? How is it working until I get to the bottom? All right, that's the bottom and I go back up and I'm thinking, okay, hmm, what's really good? Once I find something that I like, like this one, I then go to my opacity and turn this down as well. Now say you like how it really like how, say I liked how I really liked the high definition and like almost like the weird like increasing clarity that this color grade uh, gave the photo, but I don't want it on my subject. Once again, you can sh create a layer mask and uh, this time you don't invert it, you just keep it the way it is and you just switch your uh, brush to black and then that way uh, you can simply paint away the effect off of your subject. So I'll do that now. As you can see, the effect is actually coming off of my subject. So now she's not being affected by it, but the rest of the photo is. And then you can zoom in and really get into those corners so you don't have a uh, what I call an, an effect halo around your subject when you're trying to get in those edges. So you just turn 
from black to white, paint the rest of that in just like that. And then there you go. Before and after, group from layers, here we go. Name it CG for color grade, boom. So without all three of those layers, this is what we came in from with uh, Lightroom. And then with it, that is with the uh, Le Le Photoshop enhancements with selective color, gradient maps, and color lookup. And you can always increase or decrease the opacity of each one of these if you feel like you have too much color at one point. Um, or you can turn them all off and start again. But this is a great way to color grade your photos in um, Photoshop. Once you're done, all you have to do is go ahead to File, Save. And once it's done saving, you can open up Lightroom again and it will be waiting for you to continue editing or to export. And there it is. Now, don't get me wrong, this color, this photo was an extreme example. I colored the hell out of this. Uh, it's a little bit too much color for my taste. Um, I could always come back down here to saturation and decrease some of that or even take some of the vibrance out of it so it's not so like in your face with the color. But I just really want to go over and show you guys how it's easy to color grade your photos in Lightroom and Photoshop and how using both programs can definitely add a sense of um, style and enhance your photos in general. I hope this helps you guys. And that's really it guys, between selective color, gradient maps, and color lookup, those three layers have achieved the look that I like for this photo. And I usually typically use all three of them when I color grade in Photoshop. So I hope this helped you. So if you like this video today, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate all the love and support that you guys have been giving me since I've really revamped the channel. Please keep it up. Hit that like button. I need all the thumbs up I can get for my video. So please and thank you. Hit that like button if you haven't yet already. If you haven't also, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. I definitely need all of your subscribers. I'm going for 2,000, so I'm at 1,200. Let's get it going, visionaries. Spread the channel, share the videos. Do whatever you want to do to help me out if you can. I really do appreciate all the effort that all you visionaries do give me during the time that I've been here. So please definitely consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. And last but not least, if you have a comment or a suggestion or a question about this video, please leave it in the comment section below. I do converse with all of the people who decide to leave a comment under my videos. I always respond, so don't be shy. If you wanna say something, go ahead, drop a line in the comment section. This is Jason Osborne, J-O Vision, and I will see you guys on the next video. Talk to y'all later. Peace.